Welcome to Parkim Lectures. This episode is going to be about a Korean drama that used a lot of classical music. So today I'll be talking about a 2002 Korean drama, Autumn in My Heart, also known as Kaol Dua. This drama is one of the first drama of the four quadrilogy series known as The Endless Love. Each of these dramas are named after the four seasons. The first one, Autumn in My Heart. Second, Winter Sonata. The third one, Summer Scent. And the last one, Spring Waltz. Out of these four dramas, the second drama, Winter Sonata, became much, much more famous and became one of the big thing back in 2003. These two dramas became one of the big early Korean wave during the early 2000s. This is where all those sad Korean drama stories come from. This is where it all started. And so today's episode, we're going to be talking about Autumn in My Heart. So Autumn is very famous to the point that it has five remakes. One in Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, Turkey, and China. I had this DVD since I was seven years old, but I could not finish watching this drama when I was seven. Why? Because it was so, so depressing. So basically, when I was seven, I watched like one or two episodes and I, I could not stop crying. So I was like, I can't take this anymore. So I quit. But when I grow a little bit older, I watched like two or three episodes and I, I was still like, I can't take this anymore. And then I quit again. But when I was in high school, I was like, I'm a bigger man. I'm a big fucking man. And so I watched like six episodes and again, I'm like, why the f is this so depressing? I can't stop crying. What the f I'm sorry for swearing, but you'll be swearing a lot when you're in high school. But finally, when I was 23 years old, I finally got the chance to watch this whole drama for the very first time entirely without crying. But this time, I was awfully disappointed. I've seen a lot of sad dramas or sad movies before. I cried tons of times. I was prepared for this drama. But then the thing was, I think I had a high expectation when I was watching this drama. And so that's what I wanted to tell you. When you watch this drama, please don't have high expectation. This drama is a good drama, but please watch it with a very low expectation. Because the second time when I watched this drama again, I completely dropped everything. And this time, I enjoyed that this was a pretty good love story. The fact that it was made in the early 2000s. But the thing is, this drama used a lot of classical music. A lot of classical music. So why don't we all take a look at this drama together? This drama begins with a very sweet moment when a little baby boy named Jun Sa get to see his little baby sister Eun Sa for the very first time. The father went off leaving his son Jun Sa to go inside that baby room and he basically doing what babies normally do. So, the nurse accidentally switches Unso's name tag with someone else's name tag. Thus, the two babies get switched on the day when they were born. Years have passed when these babies are now teenagers. Junsa is now a very talented visual artist, and Unso is a popular girl in school. However, Unso is actually not popular to everyone because there is this one particular student named Che Shine who is her rival. But she doesn't get enough attention. It's because she's living with a very poor single mother and a very abusive brother. Anyways, back to the family. The whole family, not only Eunsa and Junsa, and we can see that it's a very, very happy family. However... Eunsa! gets hit by a truck. Eunsa! Well, thankfully she is alive, but now she needs blood transfusion. And this is where they find out that she is not their daughter. So the question is, who is their real daughter? And that was Che Shine all along. But at this moment, we get to hear the first classical music in this drama, which is Romance. Now the Yoon parents are devastated towards the truth, thus they decide to leave Korea and move to the United States to forget about all of this trash. Eventually, Shine finds out about it, and because she hates Eunsa, 
she becomes a real snitch. The young Shinae was played by Yi Ae-jung, who was unfortunately diagnosed with brain tumor in 2006, but passed away from heart failure in 2007 at age 20. Rest in peace. Anyways, back to the story. Because Shinae decided to move into the Yoon family, this caused the whole family to rip apart. This is when Eunsa decides to leave the family and go to her biological mother. Yeah, another classical music, which is Chopin's Etude No. 3, Opus 10. She couldn't say goodbye directly to her family, so that's why she decided to metaphorically say goodbye to the cups of her family faces instead. So she leaves without her family noticing her. <laughs> But Junsa and Eunsa still cared for each other like how they were used to be siblings back then. But as we remember, the whole Yun family moved to the United States. And that's it. That's how the drama ends. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was just two episodes. <laughs> and we have 14 episodes to go. We jump into 10 years when Junza became a very successful visual artist and a professor. But he is now engaged with a girl named Yumi. We get introduced to another character who is Junza's best friend, Tezok, who is a complete douchebag. He continues to flirt with the phone receptionist, and guess who it is? Chishu's <gasps> mom. It is Eunsa. But the thing is, Tezok doesn't even know anything about Eunsa and Junza's sibling mix-up, and Junza doesn't even know that Eunsa is working in the hotel where Tezok is staying. But the whole problem occurs when Tezok actually falls in love with Eunsa. <laughs> Junsa is not living in a happy life because he tried to look for Eunsa multiple times, but because her and her family moved locations multiple times, he's unable to find her. But finally, we get to see this beautiful scene where it kind of made me cry a bit. Junsa. <laughs> Finally, the two meet again. Of course, they have a lot of explaining to do. They act like siblings in front of other people, but they secretly fall in love with each other. I'm not gonna lie, but this scene nearly made me cry. But we also get to see an adult Shinne who still hates Eunsa very much. This actress is Kim ji -young, professionally known as Han che -young. You might have seen her in other Korean drama, Boys Over Flowers, as Min so -young, who is Yoon ji hoos ex-boyfriend. The Yoon family decides and announces that they will adopt Eunsa. Eunsa was married Oh, 
제가 좋아한 거예요. 오빠 아니에요. Well, shit. The two first runs away together, and Junza engages Unsa during that time, and eventually they are both brought back to the Yun family. 결혼하겠습니다. The two friends become pretty fucked up because they both love Unsa. Yumi tried everything to get him back, and even Yumi attempted to commit suicide in front of Junsa. <laughs> Because of all of this situation, Unsa decides to leave. From this point, this is where I was like, okay, now this drama is getting better. Where have you been? We find out that she has leukemia. The same way as how her biological father died. She decides to keep this to herself, but until Tezok finds out about it. I'm sorry, I have to mention this. He, this guy, Tessok, this guy is trying to drive while he's drunk and he just drank the whole bottle of- Ballantine! Far out! That's an expensive alcohol! <laughs> you drank the whole bottle, man! My apologies. But anyways, Unza doesn't have the money for the surgery, but Tezok tells her that he will financially support her because he still love her. <laughs> The whole family finds out about it, both her mothers, the father, Shine, and even Yumi, but Unsa begs them to hide this from Junsa. We get to see Unsa and Junsa together, kind of like a final moment for them together. But this is where we get to hear that Shopping Engine number no. 3 was full orchestra and full piano chords, which is different to the original version. When she goes back to the hospital to prepare for treatment, she falls into coma. And yes, Junso finds out about it. Well, there's no hope. She is dying, they can't treat her, she's now waking up, which I must say, this is one of the most emotional scenes I have seen in this entire drama. At a very last moment, Junsa stayed with her and begging her to come back. But because this is a Korean drama, we all know what's going to happen. Her body is f***ed up, too weak to have a treatment, so Junsa takes her home so the two can have the last moment together. But because Junsa is dying, Junsa attempts to commit suicide. But for a very sweet moment, Junsa decided to cheer her up by proposing to her and they actually get married. And later on she gets to spend with her final moments with other people including the whole family, Yumi, Tezok, and she tells how much she is grateful to Tezok for loving her and taking care of her for the whole entire time. Oh, 
바다에 데려다 줄수 있어? again we get to hear shopping into the game in this scene pretty much this is the moment <laughs> After the funeral, Junza asks Tezok a favor to scatter Unza's ashes for him while he is going in his own way to say goodbye to her. But we get to hear another classical music which is not Chopin and not romance. Rachmaninoff's vocals. I was shocked when I heard this music. But anyways, Junza's own way to say goodbye is visiting back at the same place where she was hit by the truck. But then, He gets hit by a different truck, but at the same place where Eunsa got hit by a truck. Basically, he broke her promise. But during the moment when he got hit by that truck, we get to see the flashback of all the things that he did with Eunsa in a memento style. Then we get to hear the final dialogue of this drama. Then the ending credits roll, and that's it. Now people consider this drama to be romantic and such a beautiful love story. But to me, this is not romantic or beautiful. It's so dark and super depressing. Nowhere romantic or beautiful in my perspective. It's just harsh. I mean, how can you be so harsh to these poor characters? But let's go back to the topic here. The classical music that has been used in this drama. Three music, Romance, Chopin at number three, Opus 10, and Rachmaninoff's Vocalist, which was only been featured in the final episode. So let's first talk about Chopin Entier number three, Opus 10. Etude is a French word of study, which is a musical composition containing heck of a lot of difficult techniques. There are many famous Chopin Etudes like are usually fast because these compositions aim for performers to develop their fast finger, wrist, and musical techniques. However, this third piano etude, Opus 10, is one of the slow etudes and the difficulty of this etude is that it is structured in a polyphonic technique. This etude has a nickname, it's either Tristesse, which means sadness, and the Du, which means farewell. Now this makes a lot of sense because this music is heard in these scenes. What do they all have in common? These are very sad scenes because this character Lunsa is saying goodbye to her family member or to Lunsa. Now let's talk about Rachmaninoff's vocalise. Now why does this music sound very depressing? Well, Vladimir Ashkenazi has demonstrated how Rachmaninoff makes music with hope and without hope. You're a big fan of Ashkenazi. Now this music didn't make any sense to me because this music came out of nowhere. But it was relevant because this scene is pretty much a goodbye scene. And instead of using Chopin, Chopin etude is describing the farewell or the sadness. But for this one, it's more of hopelessness. So Ashkenazi says that Rachmaninoff uses this closed harmony. That's how he describes it. And he talks about this in the curly variations.
And he tells that, that the harmony gradually goes down and down and diminishes. He states one of the examples of other Rachmaninoff's compositions that uses the opposite. So these pieces have hope, like the second concerto. <laughs> concerto so he even mentions that in the curly variations it descends and descends to the point that it's completely depressing. Which is how you make music very depressing. Which is the same case with Rachmaninoff's vocalist where the harmony starts opened and it gradually descends to the point that it becomes completely dark. You use a lot of diminished chords, minor chords, and sometimes a bit of a major chord. We can see at first it starts fine. And so this is how makes this music very depressing. But now finally, what we've been waiting for for this whole entire episode, romance. Now this music originally composed for guitar. In this drama, it is either performed by the piano or it also has the original guitar version of it. So the question here is why did this drama use this music in many of these scenes? It turns out this song, Romance, was not only been used in this K-drama, Autumn in My Heart, it was used a really, really old French movie. This movie is about two kids, a farmer's son and a little girl who had her parents killed by the Nazi air attack. These two kids are trying to understand the meaning of death. The story of this film is very messed up because it shows many adults screwing up this little girl's life by making her into an orphan and making her life permanently damaged. When we first heard this music in this drama, this was first presented in this scene, in this scene, and all the other scenes whenever Junza and Unsa were together. I believe this music is the theme for Junza and Unsa in a sympathetic point of view, just like these two kids in the Forbidden Games. Why? Because this tune is describing that these two cannot be together. Thus, this music naturally identifies as Forbidden Love. But I decided to give it a try and watch the second drama, which is the Winter Sonata, Kyoryonga, which surprisingly was way f***ing better than this one. But this drama also used a lot of classical music. So I will be talking about that in the next episode. So do you agree with my lecture? If you disagree or if you have any other topics that you want me to talk about, leave the comment down below. And I'll see you in the next lecture. My name is Joshua Wan Parkin, and as always, take care. Bye-bye! Thank you.